Come on. We will win. Because we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. We are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like who? All day like who? All night like who? On the blue light who? On fist like who? Defense like who? This call like who? House call like who? And it sound like who? And it sound like who? And it sound like who? Welcome to the Short Sports Show. I am your host, Daniel Short. Today is Friday, March 24th, 2017. Five months until my birthday. I'm so excited. Uh, we have a ton to talk about. March Madness Xavier beat Arizona. I don't know if that was too much of a shot. I mean, it was, I mean, I felt like it was a really good matchup either way. I, I wasn't really shocked or thought it was an upset uh, with Xavier beating uh, Arizona. You also had Kansas almost. Well, the first half it was completely different story than the second half. Second half, Kansas actually showed up and said, "Oh, we got a basketball game." Uh, but anyways, we got that to talk about. Potential NFL rules coming in 2017. We'll talk about some of the bigger ones uh, that could make a drastic change to the game that we all know and love. Also, should guns be allowed at sporting events? Doesn't matter what level. Uh, is Johnny Manziel headed to New Orleans? You know we already about that hashtag comeback season. We're going to talk about that. And is there a way to speed up the NFL game? Lots of news to talk about. Um, trying to think what's, what's, what's been breaking down this week. Uh, nothing too much. Nothing too much. Um, just, I'm, I'm excited for the show. I'm excited for the show. I do have some news, uh, probably coming in two weeks. Two weeks for you guys, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're going to start off, as always, with college football news first. And we've talked about it over and over. It's just because it seems as if every single week there is something, something happening at Baylor. Now, former Baylor tight end Trayvon Armstead was arrested Wednesday for a second time in over a week and is now facing sexual assault allegations for an alleged incident that occurred in Waco, Texas back in 2013. He's not the only one. His former teammate was arrested by the U.S. Marshals Service uh, for the same thing, same sexual assault that happened back in 2013. Uh, now, the Waco Tribune Herald reported Wednesday night that the uh, previously sealed indictment charges Armstead with uh, third, second degree, uh, excuse me, three second degree felony charges of sexual assault for an alleged incident that occurred back in 2013 when he was still playing for the Bears. Uh, now, according to the newspaper, Armstead was indicted by a grand jury last week, but the indictment remained sealed until his arrest on Wednesday. Uh, he was just a lot of things happening. Uh, it was suspended by Waco police after the alleged victim chose not to pursue charges, uh, against Armstead and former Bears running back Mike Chapman, who she accused of sexually assaulting her at an apartment. Now, Armstead and Chapman were never previously, uh, criminally charged with the indictment involving a woman who was a Baylor Bears recruiting hostess at the time. The woman told the police she did not want to pursue charges because she was too drunk to remember exactly what occurred. Now, police suspended the case after they were unable to retrieve text messages from Chapman and Armstead on her cell phone. Now, Arm said he was arrested in Las Vegas on March 13th this year uh, after police uh, said uh, after he pushed a woman, resisted arrest, and then kicked out the back windshield of a police car. Now, he's, he's also, I, I believe he's six foot six, 240 pounds. So, I mean, that was something to mess with. Uh, he was suspended from the football team back in 2015 and then expelled from the school in February of 2016 after a Title IX adjunctor, uh, found him responsible for sexually assaulting the woman and his appeal was denied. Now, a Texas appeals court ruled late Wednesday to overturn a sexual assault uh, conviction, conviction of a former Baylor Bear player, this time Sam Ukuwachu. Now, he was the most famous one. Uh, I mean, I hate to use the word famous, but the most infamous one. Uh, and he was really the first one that was really reported at Baylor. He was a transfer. Uh, he was kind of the guy that sadly got the ball rolling uh, and all the everything that's happened at Baylor. Uh, now, they granted him a new trial, though. 
Uh, a three judge panel determined that the trial court should have allowed into evidence, uh, a series of text messages between the accuser, who was a former Baylor women's soccer player, and a friend of hers made immediately before the alleged assault in October 2013. The judges wrote that the messages concerned uh, past sexual behavior between the woman and Ukuwachu, uh, which he said ha- had said in, uh, indicated her consent to have sex. Uh, the actual messages themselves were not included in, in the previous ruling. Now, the judge had sentenced Ukuwachu to 180 days in jail, 10 years of felony probation, 400 hours of community service. Uh, the George also, j- judge excuse me, also ordered Ukawachi to register as a sexual defender, and the woman had reached a financial settlement with Baylor in December of 2015. This is uh, a, a little crazy. It's just everything's happened. It seems like, well, there is, there's definitely a problem at Baylor. There's a cultural problem at Baylor. That, that's, that's a given. Uh, but it seems like some of these players, like Ukuwachu, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe he did it. Maybe it was consensual. Who knows? I mean, there's still a lot to dig into all of this. Um, and then you have the other players where, well, uh, w- 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 Armstead, even though he got in trouble, I mean, obviously he pushed a woman, resisted arrest, and then kicked out a, a back of a windshield of a police car. Uh, so he's got that to deal with, but, the woman never pursued charges. She said she was too drunk to remember anything. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, definitely controversial. And something else that might be a little controversial, and this is something I want to talk about now. Arkansas lawmakers on Thursday, I felt like I said that real Southern. Uh, they voted Thursday to exempt college sporting events from a new state law that greatly expands where concealed handguns are allowed. Uh, moving quickly to address concerns of the sweeping gun rights uh, measure leading to armed spectators at sporting events and arenas. Now, uh, the Arkansas state voted 22 to 10 to add the exemption of a new state law that Governor Asa Hutchinson signed Wednesday, allowing concealed handguns at colleges, government buildings, some bars, and even the state capitol. Uh, it allows people to carry in the locations if they complete eight hours of active shooter uh, training. Now, the law as is, here's what's kind of weird, would allow guns into Razorback Stadium while umbrellas are banned, you can bring a gun in there. Can't bring an umbrella. Umbrella's too dangerous. Uh, now, the lawmaker who called for the sports exemption noted that there are already police and security on hand uh, at arena, at stadium and arena events. And Republican Senator uh, Jim Henderson, uh, who is also the, uh, the Senate Majority Leader, said before the vote, quote, it's one of those areas that I don't think the value offsets the risk. There's alcohol, there's people getting excited, and so probably I think most people agree that maybe this is one of those areas we ought to think about before we expand the privileges, end quote. And I, I agree. Uh, now, I know this is kind of, it gets controversial be- because of it gets into politics, people saying whether you're pro-gun or against it or whatever. Uh to me, I don't care where you stand. The problem is at any level, whether it's youth sports or at the professional level, guns should not be allowed at sporting events. Uh, unless, obviously, it's an officer or security, whatever. That's okay. But fans should not be allowed to carry guns, concealed, not concealed, uh, weapons into the stadium or arena. It doesn't matter. It, it's too jan- dangerous. We've already seen where several fans outside of parking lots, you know, you look at when the 49ers and the Raiders play and uh, not just call out fans, but we've seen it several times with Raider fans, 49ers fans, even Atlanta Falcon fans. You've seen where people are getting stabbed. They're getting killed because of an argument or someone is drunk and things get taken out of hand. Imagine what's going to happen with the gun. You know, I I just don't think guns should be allowed in sporting events. Anywhere else, I mean, government buildings, that's that's kind of pushing it. I feel like that's kind of pushing it as well. But 
as, as well as bars. I don't think alcohol and guns really go well together. But no matter where you stand, I think we can all agree, though, they shouldn't be allowed into sporting events. Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, tweet me at Short Sports Show. And let me know, do you believe guns should be allowed into, right now at least, college sporting events like what's happening in Arkansas uh, to allow a gun into Razorback Stadium, but umbrellas, you still can't have those just yet. It's a little crazy. Uh, Check this out. So former Alabama wideout Antonio Carter is suing Lane Kiffin and Florida Atlantic University and the state of Florida for fraud. Yeah. This... uh, Lane Kiffin, it seems like he's having like a rough patch starting at FAU right now. You know, people, I mean, I think Lane Kiffin always is kind of like a butt of jokes type of guy. I, I feel bad for him, but it just seems a lot of things have happened to him in his coaching career that just really haven't gone his way. Uh, so, so he's having kind of like a rough patch to start at FAU. Now, Carter claimed that he was only offered the job of assistant strength and conditioning coach to help Florida Atlantic obtain a prospect, and the school re-engaged on its offer once the player agreed to the scholarship. Uh, or not re-engaged, re uh, Now, Carter has claimed Kiffin assured him he had been hired. But Florida Atlantic then confer- uh, excuse me, uh, informed Carter that he hadn't passed a background check, quote, due to two prior misdeme- minor misdemeanor, criminal charges, end quote. Now, A.J. Paris of USA Today noted that Carter had four previous arrests under uh, misdemeanor charges. Carter took pleas and incurred no jail time in each of those cases. Carter said he, both he and his wife, quit their jobs and traveled to the campus after receiving alleged assurances from Kiffin as Carter was going to assist the school in recruiting for a national signing day. He also claimed that he resolved his misdemeanor misdemeanor charges and sent documentation to Florida Atlantic, but the school never responded. He added that athletic director Patrick Chun refused to meet with them even after he waited outside Chun's office for several hours. Uh, You know, I was taught early, you do not assume things. And unless you sign that paperwork, uh, he should have done it earlier too. If he was helping uh, FAU with a prospect, and they're getting ready for National Signing Day, he should have, you know, kind of pushed it a little bit and said, "Hey, uh, I've got to, I got to sign this, I got to sign a contract first before I continue to help you guys." He did free work for them, and I don't think this is going to go anywhere. I don't think he's going to end up getting Antonio Carter. I don't think he's going to get end up getting anything. Uh, from Lane Kiffin, from FAU, he's definitely and now out of a job, even though it looks like he never even had it. Was it wrong of FAU, though, to kind of use him? It, uh, yeah, but at the same time, Antonio Carter should have had the knowledge of saying, look, I got to get this contract first, and then end up denying, you know, just not working, and just saying, all right, I'm not going to help you guys. And then could have told that prospect, too, look, they promised me a job, it didn't happen, uh, they're promising you prob- they're, they're obviously promising you something. It could be playing time. It could be, uh, whatever. They might not follow through with it either. There you go. Win win. Get right back at them. Now you're out of a job and it's not looking too good for you. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Rackbo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With personal training classes that start at $40 a session, why not be a part of this rising program? And whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not a Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs Derek Johnson, Buccaneers running back Charles Sims and San Diego Chargers quarterback Craig Mager, along with many other young athletes, have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at Intergrind.com and call 832-475-2829. That's Intergrind.com, 832-475-2829. Unleash your Intergrind. Moving on to the NFL. Now, as you guys know... Probably, I'm one of a few 
here. Uh, I'm on the hashtag comeback season boat, right? I, I'm, I'm, I still believe in Johnny football. I still believe in Johnny Manziel. And I'm hoping and hoping and hoping that he ends up getting a comeback. Now, apparently, and of course, you know, I'm rolling with it, but also, uh, I'm not dumb. I understand how the business works. Uh, Johnny Manziel, the NFL reported that New Orleans Saints coach Sean Payton had breakfast with Johnny Manziel during Super Bowl week, uh, last month, and that, uh, Payton appears to have taken interest in the former Cleveland Browns quarterback. Uh, but there are no indications at this time that the Saints are planning to sign Manziel. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hoping here. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe, maybe there's a shot. Uh, but here's the thing. It would, yes, it'd be a good thing. Johnny Manziel gets a shot, gets an opportunity. He learns under Sean Payton. He learns under Drew Brees. Great. The problem is now he's going to spend a lot of time on the football facilities and, and working with those guys, but you're still in New Orleans. Now, don't disrespect to New Orleans, but uh, it's probably not the best thing, best city for Johnny Manziel at this time. He's sober. He's doing his thing. He's engaged. He's living his life. But the last thing you need is one celebration, one little party, one little influence, and things can turn crazy. Uh, he barely handled Cleveland. Cleveland and New Orleans, those are two different cultures. Two different, complete different cultures. And him going there might not be the best move. Uh, now, of course, there's questions on Drew Brees and his contract, how he will be staying, how, how much longer he's going to be staying with the Saints. Uh, as well, he's getting older. I believe he's 38 years old now. Uh, and then Sean Payton, he's been talked about going to different spots, different coaching areas. Whether that happens now, the Saints they're looking at other quarterbacks because again, Drew Brees is 38 years old. He's entering his final year of his contract, uh, and they've already held workouts with Texas Tech quarterback Patrick Mahomes in this for for this upcoming NFL draft, as well as Tennessee's Joshua Dobbs. They also talked to uh, Chase Daniels, who used to be their backup quarterback for a few years before he headed elsewhere. Uh, he's a free agent. They've been talking to him. They're obviously looking for some backup quarterbacks. Johnny Manziel, again, it'd be great football-wise for him to learn under those two guys. But living in New Orleans, it just it's, it's just not the smart move. It's not the best move for Johnny football. I hope he makes a comeback to the NFL. I just don't think the Saints would probably be the best option. Uh, new Minnesota Vikings running back Latavius Murray underwent successful ankle in, uh, surgery, excuse me, uh, uh, Wednesday. Uh, now the, the Vikings statement, they said, Hey, we knew about it. We were aware of this, uh, before signing him and he's expected to fully recover, uh, by the start of training camp. Now he signed a three year, $15 million deal with the Vikings on March 16th to take over as their number one running back with Adrian Peterson now gone. Uh, Murray rushed for 788 yards and a career high 12 touchdowns operating primarily as the Raiders early down goal line back. Um, let's see. So we do have. Uh, you know, right now my lighting is not necessarily the best because it, it just seems like the past two weeks, uh, or this week and last week, uh, Texas weather said, you know what? Daniel's got a show Fridays. Uh, let's just make it super cloudy. Um, and I really hooking up all these lights for a, you know, a couple segments is just a little crazy, but man. We got to get this done. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I want to make this a video for this segment. Um, you know what? Nah. Nah. We're just going to make this audio. Make it a little bit more special. Now, uh, NFL owners will vote next week on a variety of potential new rules. Uh, the new league bylaws and new uh, resolutions covering everything from whether a player can leap over the line of scrimmage on a field goal to whether a team can opt out of the league's Nike's color rush uniforms, because some are just straight up ugly. Now, I'll put in a link in the description down below so you guys can see all the proposals. But for right now, we're just going to look at some of the bigger ones that are uh, more interesting, more get a little more takes in them. 
Uh, cause there, there's, uh, I believe 16 uh, total proposals, uh, or something like that. We're only going through just a few that are, uh, more interesting. First up, and this is no particular order, just kind of how the list came out. And I just started reading off and thinking what was the best. Uh, but this is by Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, they want to prohibit the leaper block attempt on a field goal and extra points. Uh, so basically they want to block, they want to make sure that no player can jump over the long snapper and block an extra point or field goal. Uh, and I, I, I can agree with it. It is kind of annoying. Uh, I mean, unless it's your team doing it, then you're excited. But you can't touch the long snapper. The long snapper really can't react in time to snap the ball, look up, and try to block. Uh, so I, I really just do not, I don't, I, I don't know. I kind of, I, I would be okay with this. If they took it away where you can't jump over the long snapper, I'm cool with it. I, I don't think it's, it's, it seems like it's only been real popular just the past couple of years because it, it barely happens. Um, so I'm okay with it. I don't think that's too big of a deal that if it changed that we're all going to be like, Oh, what are they doing? They're changing the game. They're ruining it. No, I think it's fine if they take that out because, uh, it's just, it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of cheesy. It's like when you're playing on Madden and you're playing against a computer or something and you take off the offsides penalty so you can move, so you can get some sacks for your, my player or something. I don't know. Uh, it, it's just kind of dumb just to do this. Uh, another one by Philadelphia. Uh, they want to amend the challenge system by granting a third challenge if a club is successful on at least one of its initial two challenges and expand reviewable plays outside the two minutes of each half. I'm okay with this too. I always thought, you know, uh, that this should be something where if you get a challenge right, yeah, you don't, you know, you don't end up losing a timeout, but I think you should get another challenge back just saying, Hey, I obviously saw something that the referees failed to get right. So I should be rewarded other than just, you know, my reward shouldn't just be, Hey, you don't get, you don't lose a timeout. It's not my fault. You are, you guys all missed something that I saw correctly or a player saw correctly. So I like this. I, I like, I believe that should be something. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't just, I'd be okay with whether you still have two challenges or whatever. Uh, or two opportunities of challenge. And if you get it right, then you get it back and you continue to go where you never lose a challenge. I would be okay with that too, as long as you get them right. As long as you get them right. You, you get one wrong, then you lose one and still have one remaining, blah, blah, blah. I'm okay with it. Now, Philadelphia Eagles rival team, the Washington team, uh, they said right after that, they're like, you know what? No, 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 no. They straight up went ahead. If that were to get changed, they want to now eliminate the limit of three total challenges per team per game and eliminates the requirement that a team be successful on its uh, first two challenges in order to be rewarded a third. So they just went right back at Philadelphia and said, no, we basically want to keep it where it's at. Uh, you guys aren't getting three. Uh, we don't like that. And, um, yeah. So I kind of felt like that was, that was kind of stupid by Washington. I don't know why they wouldn't like it. I'm okay with it. I'm, a, I'm all right with Philadelphia. I'm on their side right now. Uh, Washington also said they wanted to move the line of scrimmage to the 20 yard line for any touchback where the free kick travels through the uprights. I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, it, kickoffs are, I mean, we are seriously five, maybe five years at the most, five years away from kickoffs, uh, being completely unlimited, eliminated from the game, uh, due to, you know, obviously the concussions and, and, and health overall of the game. So while they're changing it and maybe a way to save it, because we're obviously seeing more and more touchbacks. What about this? You get the kicker. You know, it, it gets a little more challenging where you say, all right, from this kickoff, you make it through those uprights from the 40 yard line to the uprights. Then, hey, that's you, the, the team that was receiving loses five more yards. At least, I mean, it cuts down on, uh, on, the, on the overall kickoff returns. So there's a positive. You still have a kickoff and in case the guy screws up. Then we still have a potential kickoff, so the fans are still happy. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. So I, got, I like this move by Washington. I, I like that. Uh, the Bills and the Seahawks want to permit a coach to challenge 
any official's decision except scoring plays and turnovers. So that means it, it could be penalties straight up. If we see, I mean, think about it. And Seattle knows this all too well. And this could have backfired on them when they played, uh, was it, man, who did they play? The Falcons against Julio Jones. Remember the last few minutes of the game? Atlanta's last possession in Seattle. Uh, Matt Ryan from about, what, his own 30-yard line? Throws it to Julio Jones on a post route. Richard Sherman's covering him. And Richard might have got there just a little too early. And we thought, where's the flag? There was no flag. Seattle ends up winning. Right there, Dan Quinn with this new rule, could then challenge that decision saying, you said there wasn't pass interference. We clearly saw pass interference. Challenge. I like it. Uh, the scoring plays are automatically reviewed. The turnovers, that kind of concerns me, why you wouldn't want to challenge turnovers. Uh, fumbles are obviously a big thing. Uh, not to bring up, you know, the old school Tom Brady rule. That... I mean, that was challenged. It was, cha- it was obviously wrong, but, uh, why you wouldn't allow a coach to challenge turnovers? That, that's a little questionable. I mean, scoring plays automatically turn, are, are, uh, automatically reviewed upstairs. So I don't know. That just doesn't make too much sense to me about the turnovers. Uh, this is by the, com- uh, co- competition committee. Make crack blocks or crack back blocks, whatever you want to call it, prohibited by a backfield player who is in motion. Even if he is not more than two yards outside the tackle when the ball is snapped. Me, I, I just don't like crack blocks. I, I don't like them. Uh, they, basically what they are is, let's say you're a slot receiver. You know, obviously you're lining up in the slot. Outside linebacker or safety, whoever is on your, let's just say left side. I'm facing you, of course. And what you do is basically, as he's looking in at the quarterback and running back, you turn straight to him, and instead of running a route, it's a run play, obviously, you go and straight up knock him out. That That's kind of your job. It's, uh, it sounds brutal, but you're supposed to just straight up hit him, and obviously he's not looking, so it's going to just, he's not prepared for it. He's going to fall back. You take one man out, basically. I just don't like it. I don't like it. I just, it, that and chop blocks, I absolutely, those are the two things I hate the most. I believe chop blocks should be completely eliminated. Um, they're just not safe for the game at all, offense or, you know, defense. It's just, it's just not good. Uh, so crack blocks, I, I'm, a, I'm fine with that to take that completely out. Uh, Washington, uh, they want to, uh, change a rule in the article. I'm not good with Roman numbers. So, uh, section 17.14 is what we're going to go with. That's, that's what it is in one of the articles. Uh, to place a player who has suffered a concussion and who's not been cleared to play on a club's exempt list and then be replaced by a player on the club's practice squad on a game by game basis until the player is clear to play. I think that's perfect. I think that's awesome. Uh, to, you know, you got a guy who's obviously out and you put him on some exempt list. You promote a practice squad member and you play him game by game until that other player's, cl- uh, clear to play. I think we can all agree that that's a smart thing to do. Uh, let's see what else. Washington also wants to permit clubs to opt out of the color rush jerseys created by Thursday Night Football and, uh, and Nike. You know, whether your team liked it, you know, for the Chargers, as a Chargers fan, a uh, Chargers writer for SB Nation, the Los Angeles Chargers blog, you guys can go check it out. Uh, you know, I was okay with the Chargers rush uniforms. You know, it was kind of a throwback. You had the light blue. It's kind of, it was, a, it was a lighter, blue than their their home jerseys but it was darker than obviously the baby blue um and the white helmet with the yellow face mask at first i was against it but then you know bringing back the throwback with you know kellen winslow dan fouts you know i thought that was pretty cool so i i was i was okay with it i could rock with it um i'm trying to think of some team i just absolutely hated uh the rams away which is now actually going to be their real away, just because obviously I know they can't change the their uniform their jersey uh, too much with the gold. But if you're gonna have blue and white, 
And that's going to be your helmet and your pants and your shoes. And then you have gold on your jersey. It, it just doesn't. It looks ugly. Uh, I like the Seahawks, even though it was all lime green. I thought it was cool. Um, I'm trying to think, who did I hate? Who did I just not like? Uh, I like the Cowboys. Or Cowboys was all right. I like the Panthers. Saints, it was okay. Jaguars, it's all right. Jets is okay, Bill. Yeah, you know, I don't know. There's probably some I can't think about. Uh, I can't think of right now. But I guess that's okay. Uh, whatever. Uh, I'll spend too much time on that one. Uh, Philadelphia. Uh, they want to amend the NFL's on-field policy to allow clubs to have an alternate helmet. Uh, in color, in a color to match their third uniform. I'm cool with that too. I like that they're getting into the uniform. So they want to allow clubs to have an alternate helmet and a color to match their third uniform. So changing it up. So for instance, let's say, I know the Colts wouldn't, but let's, I know the Colts only just have two primary. Um, trying to think, uh, okay, but the, the Texans, right? They got the red, white, and blue. They only have a blue helmet. So what if they wanted a red helmet? You basically just flip the the red and the blue. Could always do that with this one and wear an all red uniform with their their alternate uh the third uniform which is their red jersey. Could always do that. You know, I like that. I'm cool with that. Uh finally, I believe this is the last one. Yes it is. Why the com- uh competition committee uh, they want to permit a, a contract or non-contract non-football employees to interview with and be hired by another club during the playing season, provided that the employer club has uh, consented. So basically, a.k.a. a coach or general manager uh, to be interviewed and hired by another team, even though he is, it's still during the regular season or during the playing season, um, provided that that other employer has said, yeah, sure, you can hire him. That's basically all it is. I like it. It's all right. I thought it was cool. I thought I, I thought I was going to have a better take on it, but I really don't. <laughs> uh, now, the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, he wants to speed up the game. And I think this is something smart. It looks like he's actually becoming a general or uh, a commissioner now. He's, he's starting to make some – I'm starting to agree with him, which either that's a good thing or a bad thing with me because uh, I really don't like a guy making $40 million doing absolutely nothing. Uh now, he told the NFL Network on Thursday that the league is considering in, uh, creating a shot clock, even though I don't know why they played put shot clock, a, a play clock uh, that would run between extra points and ensuing kickoffs. Of course, we all know we hate, I do at least, if you're a football fan, we all hate it, when you got the kickoff, or let's go, let's just move ahead. Let's go, your team drives down the field. Scores a touchdown. Woo! Extra point. It's good. All right, commercial. Cool. I'm okay with that as we head into the kickoff. You go to the kickoff. Right after the kickoff, whether it's returned or it's, it's you know, a touchback, another commercial. That gets annoying. That really does. And it, let's say a player gets hurt when you come back. Next player, player gets hurt. He's down for a little while. That's another commercial. It gets too much. And that's what Roger Goodell has said. He stressed that the league and the NFL competition committee have been trying to find ways to speed up the game for some time. Quote, it has been an effort for a long period of time. We've talked about the length of the game. This effort not as focused on the length of the game. This is focused on what's happening outside the plays. How fast we get the ball set, the number of breaks, the number of intrusions, so that fans can focus on the action, end quote. So one plan of action would be adjusting the way the league and broadcast handle television timeouts between kickoffs. Uh, basically what we just talked about. Quote, it's not, it's not necessary the length of commercial breaks. It's the number. So we're going to reduce it by 25%. We're going to add a commercial to each of those breaks, but it's something we're testing with our fans. And they actually didn't even notice it. What they noticed is the number of breaks, end quote. So it kind of sounds like a politician. We're going to reduce it by 25%. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I hope so. I hope, you know, I understand money, the television money is the biggest revenue source for professional leagues, professional sports. But the thing is, to keep fans interested, 
Uh, and especially with this, the ratings dips, whether you want to blame it on the election, which I believe is what it was, uh, you know, it's something to consider saying, look, this does get annoying. This does get annoying when you have a kickoff or you have a commercial right after a scoring, uh, possession, then a kickoff and then another commercial. You know, I don't mind to make the commercials a little bit longer, but let's just have less overall commercials, if that makes sense. So I hope this happens. I hope we see something in 2017. I don't think it'll be too big of a notice, though, for some of us. I think we're all going to just kind of yeah, be all right. Like, I wouldn't mind. Like, NASCAR does this thing, and I know the NFL can't really do it because uh, it takes away the point of actually going to a game. But NASCAR, at least what they used to do, I remember seeing it um, back in the day where even when they would have commercial and NASCAR is like the last thing you actually need it for, but they would have commercials, but they would make like a little sidebar and you could still watch the race as it happened. As commercials are playing commercials are on on a much bigger screen, but as a little sidebar, either at the bottom right or the top left, you could still watch the race. And the thing is, it doesn't make sense for NASCAR because other than a wreck, nothing is going to happen. You know, it, 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 they're literally just going in circles. You know, it's not like you're missing a bunch of action when you, they go to commercials. But NASCAR was one of the major sports that did it. You don't see it with baseball. You don't see them warming up. That would be something, to, you know, every now and then that'd be kind of cool. You know, at home to just be like, there's a commercial happening. But on a little screen, you can see players warming up. Coaches talking to the players. That sort of thing. That'd be kind of cool. At the same time, I also understand, though, that that's kind of a point to go into the games. And the NFL doesn't want to lose tickets uh, being sold because you could see the same thing at home. Kind of, You already see that at the game. So, I don't know. It's just a little idea. Maybe every now and then they could just throw it in there. You know, like basketball, TNT right now is having a players only where they're having players talk, broadcast the game. Maybe just once a week. You know, Thursday night football. Make it happen. They were thinking about eliminating Thursday Night Football. That's a way to keep it. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Tweet me at Short Sports Show and become a fan on Facebook, the Short Sports Show. That is it for today's show. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Give us a rating on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And I will see you guys next Friday morning. As always, God first, God bless. I'm out. Peace.